So I'm going to continue with using that same data um, and talk about another type of histogram that we can create. And this one's called a relative frequency histogram. It works the same exact way as your original histogram, but instead of using the actual frequency values, you're going to use the relative frequencies on that y-axis instead. You're still starting at zero, so that's not going to change. Um, and then here, again, you can, here they're using boundary points. but you can also use class midpoints. Okay, so this example, they're just choosing to use the boundary points here, boundary points. Uh, but if you wanted to use those class midpoints, you could instead, so it works the same way. The only thing that's changing is that Y axis is gonna be your relative uh, frequencies. So notice, let's see if I can just pull, kind of pull them on the same screen. You can see they're the same uh, heights. Now this graph is a little wider, so it may look slightly different because we're just making those bars a little bit wider. Here, the graph is just kind of smaller. So the bars are a little bit um, narrower. So it maybe it looks a little bit different. Um, but if you can, if you look, it's the same general shape. So you still have that same general shape. And what you're using instead are your relative frequencies. So if I go back to my original data of my relative frequencies, that's what you're seeing here. So this first height is that 0.1. And then this is that point zero 0.07. Here we have point uh, 0.17. Here, point 0.2, point 0.23, point 0.13, and point 0.1. Okay, so same idea, but that y-axis is based on those proportions, those relative frequencies instead of the actual counts, the actual frequencies. Uh, but it works the same way. Everything else kind of still falls in line. Bar should still be touching. You can use either boundary points or midpoints if you want. We should still start as zero. Um, again, if you are truncating, you can still put that little symbol in to show that you're, you know, kind of cutting off on that horizontal axis, the first 154 values. Um, but otherwise, it's the same, right? Bars are touching, right? Proportions, so the proportions are still correct. See that point 0.1 and point 0.2? That's easy to compare. If you look across, right? Point 0.2 is twice the size of point 0.1, so you're still getting those nice proportions. We can also use our cumulative frequency. So we did that as well. Talked about cumulative. Cumulative means to add. So we're adding up those frequencies as we go class by class. And we do have a graph for that too. So to describe the number of data entries that are less than or equal to a certain value, we can construct a cumulative frequency graph. So again, you're looking at those totals and combining all the intervals below it. A cumulative frequency graph, this is it here. It's also called an ogive, which is what I hear more frequently. Um, it's spelled like this. So if you see this word or if you see cumulative frequency graph, it's the same thing. It is a line graph, not a bar graph. You can see line segments here that displays the cumulative frequency of each class. And on your x-axis, we're using the upper class boundary, okay? The upper boundaries are marked on the horizontal axis and the cumulative frequencies are marked on the vertical axis, okay? So let's look at that for a second first. See if I can kind of get it, I don't know if I can get everything in the same picture here. Okay. So I'll show you first those cumulative frequencies and I wanna see that they match. So I have three, five, 10. So if I look here, okay, here's the three. We can see this is right at the five. That's right on the 10. And then I had what, 16, 23, 27. So here's the height of 16, 23, 27. And then the final height was 30. So those do match our cumulative values that we already found. And then on the X axis, you should be using your upper um, class boundary points. Okay, so notice my first one is 190.5, and that's right here, 190.5, and then 226.5, 226.5, okay, and so on. So these values here are your upper class 
boundary points. Okay, so we're specifically using those, um, which makes sense because you should have those totals by the end of that class, right? Not like in the middle because we're adding everything up. Um, so we use those upper class boundary points. Now, one other thing to note is the graph should start on the left. So we, we don't work backwards. We do like it should grow to the right, be an increasing graph. Um, and the lower boundary of the first class for the cumulative frequency is zero. So that's what they're saying here. We do start at zero in this case, right? Because you would start with zero objects or zero data points. And um, what you're going to use here is that lower boundary of the first class. So your lowest, lowest boundary point. So if you look back up here, our first boundary point was the 154.5. So that's what they're using here as their starting point. So theoretically at that point, you're before the classes, right? You would have no data. So that's why we're starting at zero in that case. And then at the end, your final value should be equal to the sample size, right? It should include all data points. So in this case, we had 30 data points. So your final height should be at that 30. Now, there's lots of different technology steps. If you read through your book, it actually will go through um, different technologies. So we have the calculator, we have Excel, which tend to be my focus. Um, but you also have a program called StatCrunch that's accessible with your My Math Lab and, and through your book. So they do show some stuff in that too. Um, what I want to do in this, sorry, and there's other graphs you can create as well um, with technology. What I want to focus on in the next video is I'm going to show you how to make a histogram on your calculator and how to make, uh, in the next two videos, how to make a histogram in Excel. So again, there's other graphs you can make. We already saw that you can do an ogive, right? Instead, you can do a frequency polygon. So those are possible too. Um, I just want to focus on the histograms here and show you how we can make those in technology.